A lot of people are interested in knowing how to thicken a sauce. What can you use? Well, there's one very important thickening agent out there that a lot of home cooks use, and that is a roux. Through this video, you'll learn how to make a perfect roux. I'll also teach you how to know whenever a white roux is done cooking. I'll even let you in on a little bit of a secret on how to make a lump-free sauce every time. So buckle up, my friends. Let's go! So what is a roux? A roux is a thickening agent. It's used to thicken sauces like a bechamel sauce or a velouté sauce. It's used to thicken soups like cream of mushroom. It can be even used to thicken dishes like a mac and cheese or a gumbo. A roux is equal parts fat to flour. The fat could be anything from butter to bacon grease to duck fat or to an oil. The flour is typically an unbleached flour. There are three different types of roux recipes. There's a white, a blonde, and a brown. Today I'm going to walk you through how to make a white roux and how to make a blonde roux. For this first example, we're doing a white roux. So I've placed three tablespoons of butter, 30 grams, into a saucepan over medium heat. Melt that butter down. You don't want to burn it, you don't want to brown it. This is a white roux, so keep it white. One question that you may have is, well, how much fat and flour should you use per one cup or 250 milliliters of cooking liquid? It's a good question. Well, it really depends on the thickness of the sauce that you're shooting for. For a thin sauce, you make a roux with one tablespoon or 10 grams of fat, could be butter, bacon grease, any sort of oil, with one tablespoon or 10 grams of flour. For a sauce with a medium thickness, for the roux you use one and a half tablespoons of fat, or 15 grams, and one and a half tablespoons of flour, or 15 grams. And finally, for a thick roux, you'd use three to four tablespoons, roughly about 30 to 40 grams of fat, to three to four tablespoons, 30 to 40 grams of flour. All right, so now that the butter is melted, it's time to add the flour. We put three tablespoons or 30 grams of butter, so we're gonna put three tablespoons or 30 grams of flour. This roux recipe is going to be for a medium thick sauce. So we're gonna use two cups of cooking liquid and add it to this roux. The saute pan is over medium heat. Grab a whisk, mix that flour into the butter. You're looking for a wet sand type consistency for the roux. The flour and the butter, it's incorporated really well. The roux is cooking really nicely. This is a white roux, so again, just watch the heat. You don't want to brown it. But let me show you an example of what happens whenever there's a little bit too much flour, a little less oil, and the roux starts to lump up. Here's a great example from a chicken fried steak sauce recipe where the roux, it started to lump up. It didn't have that wet sand type consistency. To remedy the situation and bring it back to that wet sandy type look, all that you have to do is add a little bit of fat. In this case, half of a tablespoon of butter, threw it on in, and it brings it to that wet sandy consistency so that this roux can cook evenly through. All right, now to go back to our white roux example. So one question a lot of people have is, how do you know a roux is done? How do you know that it's cooked? Especially a white roux where you're not cooking it 10 to 50 minutes. Well, there's a couple different ways that you can tell. The first way to tell that the roux is done is the color. It'll go from a buttery yellow to a whitish color. Check around those bubbles where that arrow is, it's starting to turn white. You're looking for that white throughout the roux. The second way to know that the roux is done is whenever you start to smell a warm, nutty type smell. So now that the roux is cooked, it's time to add that liquid. We're going to put two cups or 500 milliliters of cool chicken stock into the roux. Just pour it on in. Turn that burner up to medium to medium high heat. You want to bring the liquid to a simmer or to a boil. That'll activate that roux to create the thickness. This step of the sauce making process seems to scare people the most. They're scared of making lumps in the sauce. What is the secret to making a lump-free sauce? Well, break out your notepad. You can do one of two things and it works every single time. First is to pour a cool liquid into a hot roux, or you can pour a hot liquid into a cool roux. So you never really want to pour a hot liquid into a hot roux or a cool liquid into a cool roux. That could lead to lumps. For this example that I'm doing today, I've poured a cool chicken stock into a hot roux. Grab a whisk and give it a good mix. Start to incorporate that roux into the liquid. Scrape the bottom of the pan, the side, the top. Just make sure that you incorporate the liquid really well. You'll also want to grab a spoon. Sometimes it makes it a little bit easier to grab all that roux off the bottom. Give it a little bit of a mix. Bring it to a simmer. A roux is such a versatile thickening agent. It's a really good idea to learn how to make a roux. You can use a roux to make mac and cheese, a roux to make a gumbo, a roux to make various sauces, traditional French mother sauces like a bechamel or a velouté. All right, but check out how this roux thickened up this white sauce really well. It's nice and glossy. It looks really thick. It's the medium thickness. It coats the back of the spoon. This sauce is ready to go. 
Okay, so we know that there's three different types of roux. There's the white, the blonde, and the brown. So what's the difference between these? Well, cooking time and flavor. So white is cooked just a few minutes, no flavor. Blonde, cooked anywhere from two to 10 minutes, and it has a little bit of a slight nutty flavor. And then brown, it is cooked at least 10 to 50 minutes, and it has a deep, rich, robust, dark, nutty type flavor to it. Okay, so let's begin our second example here with a blonde roux. We'll start off on a burner over medium heat. We're putting in one tablespoon of bacon grease, fresh bacon grease. You can see those little clumps of bacon in there. And one tablespoon of butter. The cooking method for this blonde roux, it is the exact same method as cooking the white roux. This particular blonde roux is for a Cajun gravy, and it's a great example of showing how you can start building flavor for a sauce starting with the roux. So the butter and the bacon grease, it's melted down. So we added our two tablespoons of flour, so we have equal parts flour and fat. All right, so the layers of flavor for this blonde roux, they started off with the fat. So you've got the butter, creaminess. Then you've got the bacon grease. Wow, nothing tastes better than delicious bacon grease. Then you added in the flour. So now we're cooking that flour. We're cooking it slowly for roughly 10 minutes. It's gonna bring out a warm, nutty type flavor as well for this roux. You can just slowly see this blonde roux turning up from a little bit of a light color to a darker color. We're cooking it for 10 minutes over medium heat. Make sure that you watch it, give it a stir. You don't want it to burn. So check out the color of this roux. After 10 minutes, it kind of looks like a peanut butter type color or a brown paper bag type color. You can just taste the flavor by looking at it. For this particular Cajun gravy, I threw in some Cajun style vegetables into the roux, kind of let it cook there at the end, kind of let it saute together. But once it was ready to go, threw in the veal stock, one and a half cups, mixed it up just like the white roux. Make sure that that roux is off the bottom of the pan, grab a whisk, grab a spoon, incorporate it really well. Bring it to a simmer over medium high heat. And then after roughly about five minutes, check it out. It coats the back of the spoon, it's nice and thick, it's ready to go. All right, so we hit that white roux recipe, hit the blonde roux recipe. Now for a brown roux, really it's the same process, but you cook it out anywhere from 10 to 50 minutes. Well, thanks for watching the Sauce and Gravy channel. Hope that you enjoyed the recipes on how to thicken a sauce with a roux. Please leave your comments below. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Don't forget to hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, and to remember as always, to live, love, and make gravy.